How you doing? Nice. Fine, I guess. Yeah. You guess? <laughs> You're nervous? <laughs> oh, dude, do you know that I'm nervous every time I stream? Every time for the last six years. Whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? And then I can link your, your portfolio in the chat and you can just talk a little bit about your, like, What's your name? How you got into what okay. you're doing, and and like kind of where where you're heading, and then we'll just kind of go through your portfolio, and we can just kind of flow in the conversation, so to say. Yeah, sure. But yeah, so, go for it. yeah, my name is Ander Artola. I'm from a village called Ondarroa. I live in Bilbao, in the Basque Country, um, in the north of Spain, and yeah, I I I started like in three like. 10 years ago, something like that. Mm. But I didn't do anything. And I always wanted to be a F1 engineer. And I didn't do it because a week earlier, I changed it to informatic. <laughs> I was <laughs> a computer science degree studying. And five years into that, I just said, enough is enough. Then the pandemic hit. Oh, and nice. I, yeah. I ended up studying... Like, I guess you call it something like voca vocational studies. Yeah, vocational. Vocational training. Yeah. And yeah, I did it two years, six months of internship, and here I am. Oh, you did an internship as well. Was that at yeah. like a, a game studio? Uh, yeah, it's called Yoda Games. It's in Barcelona. Dude, that's awesome. And yeah, it's it's um, part of the studies. You know, you if you want to ended up the, the, the studies you need mm -hmm. you need to do it like six months in Barcelona here in the Basque country I think is four months but you you actually need to do it or you don't finish it so right. man so you you dove right in like you just yep. straight into school and then from there yep. right into two it years and then and then I did it or internship like I, yeah man that's cool so, okay so I mean yeah. so if we look at your portfolio your, uh, it says 3D environment art and prop art. Right now you have both of those kind of listed. How are you feeling yep. about those two? Uh, it's the thing I want to do. Yeah. Like, uh, I guess the first year was a bit some, like, I don't know what to do because I like programming, but I don't like it. So, and then I, I started doing more art and I was like, okay, I like this. And then we did mm. a, like a project from for a dungeon or something like that, I guess. And, and I, I was like, okay, this is this is what what I want. Yeah. Do. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So here I am. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because like uh, when when we look at three D environment art, usually in in AAA. I don't know if that's if you're aiming for AAA or if you want to do like double A or start in like a smaller company. But um, yeah, no, AAA is AAA. Okay. actually okay. the um, the masters and. I'm gonna do it's about triple a games so okay yeah, yeah so so <clears throat> usually in triple a they split into two teams um okay. as as a studio gets larger you just get environment artists and then you get uh the props team or the props oh, artist. okay um yeah i see but i mean to apply to be an environment artist <clears throat> you have to have an environment right and an environment is mm -hmm. full of props so um one of the things i look out for when i'm looking for an environment artist to join a team is they actually need to understand how the creation of an asset works, even okay. if in depending on the production or the depending on the team, mm -hmm. uh, you might not ever actually make a prop. You might just be propping like building a scene out with existing content or requesting oh, okay. content. But it's okay, nice okay. to know that uh, <clears throat> that you understand like from the from the ground up, right? Because yeah, maybe, maybe I mean, we need you to build something, and it's like. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, uh, like yeah. for my in my second year, I ne I needed to do like a final project mm. with other four people, and I did like all the environs, the computers for the scene, the I mean the beds. The so I I did actually everything, mm -hmm. almost everything. Looking back at, back at it. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, like, this is too much. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is too much. And yeah, yeah. I, I actually, like, for a week and a half and something like that, I slept, like, three hours, four hours. Because, oh, man. 
there wasn't any time and i was like i'm i'm not i'm i'm not doing it i'm not and yeah i did it i actually did it but, yeah, <laughs> but, but it, it was, it was. A lot, right it took yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, energy yeah. yeah 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 man okay well <laughs> dude that's crazy um so wait, how long has it been since the the internship um i finished it on may last okay. year yeah okay may, may yeah. last year nice may or july something like that perhaps july perhaps july didn't don't remember it correctly mm. no it's cool i'm just uh, trying to was, get a gauge for like where yeah. where you're at in time and, and whatnot um i did i did uh, i work on a um, rts game for mobile phones i, I think yeah, I think it's what it was for Android mm. games. So, dude, yeah. crazy. Wait, so how does how did that work? Is that like, were you were you outsourcing? Were they outsourcing to you, or was it like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. They okay. they they say like, okay, you need six months of this. Uh, actually, the the school provided it. Like here is here it is, and I was oh. like, okay, what what I'm what what do I need to do? And they say, okay, we are doing an RTS. You need to do all the buildings. And I was like, great. And yeah, dude, I did like the. It's an RTS like a bit like uh, Age of Empires. Yeah. So it was like from the ground up to modern society and stuff like that. Oh so, yeah. Wow. Okay. On and my I... Instagram, there is some some stuff about that here in Art Station, not that. Oh, yeah, so you didn't want it to my... be in your Art Station? No, because it's um, stylized, and I mm -hmm. didn't. Feel yeah, you don't want it to mix it with your yeah 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 no i get so, that i get that do you have a, so i'm gonna just tangent off a little bit here and see like if you have it in your um in your about section yeah it looks like you mentioned the rts yeah uh, yeah and then you got your email because it, it should be somewhere because that says a whole lot about what like where you're at in your career as well as like okay um your ability to complete tasks in a yeah, professional right. scenario is like you can't uh try not to hide that i guess you could hide okay. the art but uh make sure that uh mm -hmm. uh make sure it's listed somewhere that's super cool though um yeah so okay so you're going for more realistic stuff yeah uh yep. and you've got uh i don't know if you want to start at the very beginning or if you want to skip and like focus on a, a few pieces I mean the the weapons I have them there because I did mm. it like with 3D code so I guess Oh people, that's interesting. Yeah because we didn't we didn't use uh, ZBrush. Mm -hmm. We used 3ds Max and uh, 3D code. So yeah. Right. And yeah I I have them there because I mean I guess it's nice to have them but <laughs> Yeah yeah. But the the other stuff uh, it's more Actually, the the uh, apart from the the project of the Batmobile, the mm -hmm. other ones are uh, once I finished, uh, I say okay, I wanna do this. So I started like learning tutorials, courses, right? Yeah, internet, yeah, yeah just the station education and just pushing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now I'm actually working on a on a culture center and uh, mm. doing like posters for events and stuff like that so i can let's say farm a bit of money <laughs> yeah and continue like studying um right so you're kind of like freelancing on the side while you kind of push yeah. the yeah yeah dude that's that's awesome yeah so you're you're a hustling one <laughs> you're yeah. like you're doing you're doing the yeah, work yeah. on both ends that's awesome man um okay so i guess so we'll maybe we'll skip the the meat mat uh characters yeah. I do like how they're framed, at least for like being able to see the whole asset. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when 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 you look at the weapons, they're they're clipping on the edges, and I think if you could frame them maybe more angular, okay, uh, just so that you can see the entire weapon, it'll just be better for the the portfolio presentation. Sure. Um, maybe I mean I don't know if like the way you're rendering it, if there's a way to to use a darker backdrop just to like unify your thumbnails a bit more. I think okay. that would help a lot. But um do you want to like do you want to look at the map, the Batmobile or just go from the Mars forward? Cuz you did as, these, as you these wish four. like Yeah, okay. Yeah, these four are, are the are the new ones, let's say. So. Okay, so these four, yeah, cuz you were saying these are after uh you finished school. Yeah. 
So yep. we'll, we'll start with the Mars rover then, because like the fact that what it's it's basically been a year or a little less than a year, less than a year, yeah, yeah. And you've already completed four other projects. It's really cool. Oh, I can already tell as well, just based off of the wheels that you have here, that you're you're researching or you've got references of something space related. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the design of these wheels is very specific for like trying to uh, maneuver over like a lot of unique terrain yep. and be able to deal with Actually, it. Actually, the, the rocks are just the uh, mega scan. So yeah. Oh, yeah, that's do... good. No, that's, that's cool. <laughs> I, I did the, the, yeah, the I mean, roller. You, yes, that. <laughs> you you that's it. mentioned it in here as well, so that's good. Yeah. But it's like the design of, of the vehicle and like thinking about how how to use it and how it's built and stuff is really good. There are some like, like some simple uh, things to highlight with like hard edges and like um, okay. in the inner, I don't know, are you watching a stream or do you want me to like share to the discord to you? No, no, I, I'm watching the stream. So okay. So there's sorry, like, sorry. there's a base area here where there's a bit of stretching. So yeah. watching yeah. for like how your UVs are and like making sure those are all quite clean in the way that they, that, that there's not a lot of stretching. Um, okay. and then you've got like, uh, areas where there's, there's hard edges, like where the legs connect. Maybe I can zoom in on this, like where the legs, uh, these pivoting points connect where you okay. don't see the hard edge. And if there was just a bevel on there, then the lighting will catch it a bit more like you see on the metal pieces. Oh. And then okay. you, all of a sudden you can see the shape language much easier. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see what else we can, we can point out. The, the other thing too, is like. I mean, you were designing this, right? So it's going to be a little bit more painful when it comes to like, how do I design? <laughs> so when, when people are designing things, a lot of the times you'll see, um, the, the previous language of a primitive shape that was taken further. So like, for example, I can tell that like, uh, either this was a, this was a box and then you beveled this edge and this edge, and that's how you got this shape here. Yeah, and then it's actually a box. Yeah, and then you extruded <laughs> like the the front piece, yeah, forward by one edge. So being able to break away from those, um, those kind of what would you call those? They're like they're calling out to you as like being able to reverse engineer how it was modeled. Mm -hmm. If you can step away from that um, or focus on making sure that you kind of try and get those details to disappear, you'll okay. end up getting a much stronger like uh, design result. Um, okay. But it's probably, that's probably one of the harder things to do. Like if you're like, you're trying to push your art skills, but then at the same time you're trying to design, it's, it's a freaking battle on both sides, trying to like make it look like it's actually designed, but then also trying to, trying to make it yep. Yep. and complete it in, in its own. But, um, no, this is, this is cool. I'm trying to see if like, let me just go back to this one here. Oh, this is nice as well. Yeah, see in the front actually, the the way this is modeled is is um, stronger than than it actually looks in in these views, and I'm wondering why that is. Maybe it's just because there's in in Blender there's a lot of colors that are helping you separate your elements a bit more. Yeah, and you're getting the highlights from the the way that the viewport renders uh, the surfaces, so it's much easier to distinguish and understand the shapes. But think mm -hmm. about like when you design this type of stuff, you think about like how does the how does the door open? Does it, it looks like it slides maybe? And then there's a ladder. Yeah. I, I actually was going to do like the interior, mm. but, the, but then I, I was like, Dude. okay, I I, I, can't, I can't do it. Like, yeah. I, that's a lot. That's <laughs> no, a lot. It's not yeah. happening. <laughs> that's so, yeah. a lot of work, man. Um, but yeah, I guess when you think about like if someone was sitting here. Um, judging by the size of that door, I'm assuming it's either a single or maybe a two seater. And, um, uh, yeah, it's yeah. actually two. Okay. So these yeah. side triangle pieces, just bringing those in will already kind of like make it feel a little bit more of a, like a designed, um, okay. where it's kind of, it's almost starting to become a triangle and then mm -hmm. these, these triangles are pointing further in, but, um, okay. that's more of like my personal taste on those types of details. It's so it's not necessarily like, oh, design it this way because it's better. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, generally speaking, it's, it's cool. Um, and the way you're, you're displaying everything is, is good. 
I think I would show your UV sets and just like mm -hmm. what your textures look like and then okay. try and um, like I, these two images, like you've got a front three fourths and a back three fourths, putting those in the same image would save on the mm -hmm. scroll time. Cause I always talk, yeah. I always talk about people uh, uh, trying to make sure that they don't um, cause people to scroll too long. Cause like some okay. people might not ever get to the bottom. They might just like, yeah. They might just look at the top one and then like these ones and say, okay, cool. And then move on. But if they're curious about how you're texturing something, then they want to look at your <clears throat> textures. Maybe they want to see your, how you modeled stuff and. Okay. But, um, yeah. So, okay. Let's go back to, I guess I could have just hit the next arrow, but, uh, with the abandoned house in the middle of the woods, do you want to talk about this one a little bit and we can. Yeah, actually, that was the first project I did with Blender. Like, so the the, the car was after this, but mm, yeah, okay. I, I just move it upwards, and yeah, I I did it a basic like house. Yeah, and I use it. This is the first time I used uh, also um, uh, Unreal Five, so ah. I did it. All all my studies were with Unity, and. Yeah. I jumped straight to Unreal with the materials, with the mega scans, and I was like a bit like, okay, this is this is heavy, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I did this like it's just a house, right? Mega scan, mega scans assets, and that's yeah, it. you're just focusing on modeling a house. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's a great way to <laughs> learn Blender or learn any 3D tool is to just model, like try and model something. Even just like you don't have to texture to to learn the software, right? But yeah. um, no, and I, and I like the way that you're, I like that you're using um, mega scans in a way where it, it's allowing you to focus on the things you want to focus on. And mm -hmm. then it's, and it's assisting you in building the rest of the environment. It also gives you a target that you can be next to. That's like literally in your scene that is showing like the differences between your work and like uh, someone else's work. So you mm -hmm. have this like target that you have to, that you have to lift to. Um, let me see if I can I'll hit play on this, but I have no idea. Okay. I've got it muted. So one thing I'll mention, I don't know if you've, how much you've sat in portfolio reviews. Um, but I usually mention trying to do as little as possible in the shots. So, okay. so if you have an initial shot where it fades in, if it's fading in and the camera is already moving, you have this consistent speed at which things are, it tends to feel less artificial. So, so it'll just, the camera's moving at like a, let's say the camera's moving at a speed of five, whatever five is. Mm -hmm. And, um, when you, when you cut to the next shot, uh, if that camera is also moving at the speed of five, that, that can be, it feels more natural, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, okay I see. <clears throat> and what I notice in the first shot is when the camera is moving forward, it starts to move forward. So it's, it start from still, and then it stops and then it looks up. To me, those are two separate shots. And if you can like, you either uh, start the camera moving before you, it fades in and then mm -hmm. start looking up at the building as you're moving forward okay. or, you, or you split them into two shots. It'll just feel more natural. I should probably do a video on that topic because <laughs> I, I explain it a couple times, but I feel like it's never fully explained. Um, okay, okay. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it, okay. Nice. Oh, yeah, go ahead. If you if you no, want. No, to no, nothing, nothing. Just, just the, it is nice to know, like, also the the, the camera shots that are important. Let's say. Mm. Yeah, you just don't want it to feel anything that makes it feel like it's unnatural, or it, that takes you out of like what you're visualizing. That's when it yeah. it kind of throws throws people off. Okay. Um, but yeah, dude, learning Blender, and experiencing unreal engine five for the first time i think the the things that stick out to me with this scene is the so the way the building is modeled we've got the um these slats of wood which i think i've seen in real buildings i don't know if you were working off of references or if you were no, just kind I, of putting, I, putting something together i actually just just i, I put it together okay, okay this it, is gonna be like this this is gonna be like this yeah okay uh, yeah, it's, it's really important, I think. Uh, I mean, I guess the focus of this was to learn Blender. 
and yeah. try yeah. out uh, Unreal Five. Yeah. Um, but when I guess when the focus is to like, okay, I'm going to execute on making this like really good building. The mm-hmm. goal, the goal would be then to make sure that it it'll stand up on its own as like uh, structurally strong or like the design of like where beams are at makes sense with um, with real life. And that's, okay. I mean, that's the reason that references are all, you'll hear everyone always say, get references, get tons of references. Yeah, Just actually because, my, yeah. My, my professor was like, okay, you need to understand the first day it's references. The second day is references. The third day yeah. is references. <laughs> and I was like, okay, but I, I, I need to work. <laughs> you know? it's, dude, um, it's, it's so true. Like if you're a, just to give you a, a scale example, if you're working on a game where the production mm-hmm. time, and this is like AAA level, let's say, let's say the game takes three years to build. The first year and a half is referencing. Nice. It's like crazy. And the references can literally be concepts and designs and stuff that are coming from the internal, uh, mm-hmm. from the studio itself. But it's, it's more about defining and distinguishing like what, what you're actually going to build for the visual side of whatever the game is. Yeah. Now, now I'm doing like two separate, um, projects that are not in the, in that session cause they are not finished mm-hmm. and the pure ref it's, it's crazy. Like I, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> like I, 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 I searched everything. I was like, okay, this is going to be like this. This is going to be like this. And it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Let's say it's Dude, a lot. crazy. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I, you can never have uh, too much uh, references, I would say. I think the best thing to do is if you're using pure ref is to probably start, uh, you want to use something like Dropbox or, or some, something that can give you backup files because okay. I've noticed that uh, pure ref can uh, corrupt a file every once in a while. Okay. It's rare, but it can happen. So you have a backup of those, but then also to try and separate your pure refs into like, categories like okay these are these are this pure ref board is just about building architecture and then this one's okay. just about the props this one's okay. maybe all foliage or something like that just it'll be faster to load and it doesn't uh has less chances of destroying everything um before we move on to the the next one i just wanted to highlight some stuff that so the things that the things that stick out to me um so we've got we've got some hard edges it looks like maybe you were using decal edge decals or something on the edges. I'm not sure if no. that's No, it's, it's actually the the OCD add-on of um Oh, so you're actually doing it in geometry. Yep. Oh man, okay. So this is is this nanite as well? <laughs> yep. Oh man, <laughs> awesome. Okay. So uh just trying to get away from sharp edges is one thing that'll help a lot with mm-hmm. like getting things to geometry wise to not feel like 3D. Um okay. And then we, if we start looking at textures and materials, so you've got some like lines that follow here and just making sure that on the underside, they follow as well. If you're using Nanite, these lines, I would argue don't even need to be in the texture. They could probably actually be modeled. Um, okay. I see. Just so that you get a consistent like design around how things are put together. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is like the, the surfaces of the wall feel a little low red, like there's a noise. Is that a detail normal? I actually don't remember it. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's been a little I bit. Don't okay. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So detail normals are are key. I just wrote an article and I can post it to you um, after after the stream. Okay. But, um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's, detail normals are freaking everything. They add so much to every surface that they should literally be on every asset that you ever make. Um, okay. And then the other one I would say is the windows. Uh, just getting the glass to feel right. I think right now you've got some normal maps that are trying to imply that there's like a, a grime or a dirt on the glass. Mm-hmm. And you probably don't need to do that in the normal at all. You can probably just do that in the roughness and the albedo, and that would be enough to kind of like push that that visual. Okay. Okay. But uh, let's, let's keep going through these because we're already at like 20-ish, 25 minutes or so. Um Nice. So do you want to talk about this destroyed church a bit? What was the goal here? Yeah, actually, I, I, I just watched it like, I, I can't remember. I, I watched a film, something like that, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, I can, I can do that, like a destroyed church. And then I, I discovered that Blender 
does this kind of walls. So I didn't use like the standard procedure, let's say. Okay. And, and yeah, I, I just wanted to, to, to try that atom and I think it's quite nice. And then yeah, it's actually pretty and, cool. Uh, yeah, it... that those, those rocks are made by me. Okay. Which I think you can say like, like it's a bit rough because I didn't use C rush or anything like, because I didn't know how to use it. Right. Right. Now I, I'm actually learning, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> now oh you're learning ZBrush now? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Shiraz and Designer. So, I mean, even with the rocks the way that they are, they can work as long as there's other things assisting them. So, like, right now, all the rocks are very similar in size. Mm -hmm. If you treated these as, like, the medium rocks or, like, the large ones, and then you okay. had some smaller ones to support them and then some, like, even smaller ones to kind of put around those, okay. they start to ground themselves more. Um, and they... Okay they tend to look more uh, natural um, just in the way that they communicate with it. Cause they're not, I would say they're not bad. They're just, they're very similar <coughs> to each other. So everything kind of reads the same. Yeah, sure. So it's just getting like size variation and, and natural breakup with that. Um, but you were saying that you modeled these differently. Is that like. Uh, it's, it's an, it's an blended add-on that makes like walls and you can put windows and stuff. Oh, so okay. And then, and then the, I, I just break them. So I take out the Right, like, so you just start cubes. cutting around the sides. Yeah. and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, so that's it's, not a it's crazy way to it's work. It's modular. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Let's see. So I think with this scene, oh, I mean, some of the later shots, you're starting to get a sense of like, okay, what, why, are, like, why are we in this scene? What are we supposed to be looking at? So you want to mm -hmm. try and figure out like what the focal points are. Okay. And from like a compositional standpoint, it's like when we when we look at an image, what are we? What's the goal? What are we looking at? Um, okay. And so if you don't, if you can't answer that like immediately, then the the composition or the way things are put together is just not working yet. And I think okay. uh, this one with the the light pointing towards the wall mm -hmm. um, is probably the one that's communicating it the clearest. Uh, this this one's doing it as well, and I think it's just figuring out what to do with the tree line in the back, so that it's just like right now it's quite even, but yeah, maybe you can okay. use compositionally you can use the tree line maybe it goes down as it goes behind the building, and that would lead to you like um, like pointing the viewer at the building itself. Okay. So yeah, just some like compositional compositional stuff, and it, it's just. Um, making sure that stuff isn't too dark as well. I know it's like a nighttime shot. Mm -hmm. You can just take your skylight and just add a little bit of, uh, add a, like a night color that you would like to fill your shadows and then just kind of bring it up until it's not, uh, okay. it's not like a pitch black pixel. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. And then is this the most recent one? The, the shack? No, the most recent. Yes. The shack. Yeah. I want to do like the, the, the classic, modular sci-fi environment but mm -hmm. i just watched it the second avatar movie and i was like okay i'm gonna do this so yeah, this is all you got inspired yeah yeah this is all modular stuff um yeah it Dude. was quite a quite a nice work <laughs> yeah this is a, i can see that you you are growing and in, in the quality of your stuff is going up especially with like you did you do like a cloth sim on the the yep yeah, yeah. yeah. was that all in blender as well Interesting. I have not tried to deal with that yet in Blender. <laughs> uh, Actually, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not convinced about the, the the textures of the the metal of the of the shack. Okay. You no, know? because I I still don't know how to use quite like the way you are using the the materials for the for the project you are doing. Like I right still, with masks I, and stuff. Yeah I, yeah, I don't understand that, so I need to work on that. Because now it's like, okay, this has a material, this has a material, this has a material, yeah, and it's And you're like, like, how is that? How are they interacting with each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I will. Do, I will do a breakdown of that one. That's actually next on my plate after the thing I'm I'm building now. And like Exile saying in chat, anchor points are like your best friend when it comes okay. to like, um, what you're what you're texturing in Substance Painter, and if you're just yeah. building masks inside of Substance Painter 
getting anchor points to help you communicate between details that you add uh, normal map wise or height map wise inside of substance painter it'll okay. it'll react in in the way that it's supposed to as if it was modeled and then baked in to begin with but uh i would say like generally speaking the materials on here are, are fine and it's more about thinking about the logic of like why things are where they're at so if you okay. think about where the rust is Right now, the rust is in every crevice, and maybe if it's really old, it is going to be in like every crevice. But thinking about like, okay, was this thing painted before, and like, how where does the paint chip away? How is okay, the I see. yeah <clears throat> where where does the dirt build up? The dirt's most likely going to be on the bottom, but if it's been around for a long time, there's going to be a lot of like like you're starting to to do is the the plants on the rooftops or on the, mm -hmm. on the top of it, you're getting that overgrowth feel. Um, is oh man you did the inside too freaking yep. hardcore yeah see the on the what is it the i want to say bed but i know it's not a bed but the yeah. the plant yeah, avatar link let's say yeah the the link machine thing uh <laughs> it's those details that are on the on the top like getting that type of stuff on the roof as well as is would be really good and maybe it is there and i'm just not yeah see you're putting it on everything so oh wow and you did go quite modular with it cool yep. yeah i think so modeling wise there's still a little bit of like trying to push your modeling further mm -hmm. uh just so that the shapes aren't as primitive like they're not it's not bad but it, it like it's pushing like how do we push that further and then okay. there's the materials trying yep. to get your material uh pbr understanding in line with uh with the industry it's just a matter mm -hmm. of understanding how to deal with uh your roughness and especially your, your metalness maps, uh, or metallic map. Oh, this is great that you're showing this because then I can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, your roughness actually looks pretty good. There's a lot of stuff going on in your albedo and a ton of stuff happening in your metalness map. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess it's, it has a lot to do with how it's aged. Like it's very old. So thinking about how, like what builds up where and like I would expect the whole floor to not be metallic at all, just because it'd be so dusty and, and dirty. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this, is, this is nice with the video as well. But yeah, I, I mean, for me, I think it looks like you're you're pushing your materials, you're pushing your modeling further. Like your modeling has gotten better, and um, it's it's pushing your modeling to go beyond uh, the shapes that they are now to try and emphasize a more interesting silhouette. And then you've got your materials that, that you want to keep pushing to get your PBR values in line. And then thinking about your composition and what you're focusing on when you have like a screenshot of a space. Like I think that compositionally, uh, this scene was much stronger than your than okay. your previous stuff. Like you knew what to focus on. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, I actually yeah. wanted to do like something like more, let's say Pandora-esque, but I'm not so yes. good doing. There's not I'm much. Not so uh, doing so. <laughs> there's so, not uh, much doing... assets out there that that can yeah. help you uh, fill out the rest of the environment around you. But it's yeah. You can see the growth, so that's really good. Um, but I think so. We're we're quite over on time. But did you have any questions before I jump into the next call? No, just just the 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 things I say about you know how to like use the materials on Unreal and how to mm. mask it and st stuff like that. Like, where do I find something to understand that? Right. Um, well, Polygon's in chat, so he might drop something really quickly. But uh, okay. <laughs> but don't uh, don't hesitate to message me because I, yeah. okay. I can link you the what you're looking for. I mean, you also, you're, you're subbed on Twitch as well, so. Yep, yep. It's like, I... I, I should help you out. <laughs> um, but nah, yeah, nah, no it's, problem, no it's not, uh, it's not as crazy as you might think. It looks like spaghetti at first, but it's, I mean, it's a friendly okay. spaghetti. It, it's, okay. it's just knowing how to eat spaghetti. That's all. Um, good to know. Good yeah. to know. But yeah, I can, I can send you some resources when it comes to like, uh, material setups and yeah, then, okay. uh, detail normals is another thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually learning how to how to use stream sheets now. So yeah. oh, nice! It's it's another another step. So 
Yeah, the, dude, and the thing is, is it never stops. There's always something new yeah, to... <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed it, I noticed it. But awesome, man. I guess yep. um, I guess we'll Thank talk later then. But um, yeah, and I appreciate you submitting your portfolio. We can chat about it, and I can get yep. a voice to the name. 